Google is trying to simplify the management of Google Ads accounts, but surprise, not everything that they announce is in your best interest. Google announced auto-apply recommendations that on the surface seem harmless, but if you aren't careful, several of these recommendations can do more harm than good and negatively impact the performance of your Google Ads account. In this video, we'll break down what auto-apply recommendations are, why you should avoid most of them, and what you can do instead to stay on top of things to drive better results. Let's discuss. Hey friends, my name is Scott Redgate, and if you're new to this channel, I'm passionate about helping small businesses make more and spend less and show you that you have what it takes to manage your own online marketing campaigns. Before we discuss today's topic, I would be honored if you could hit that like button and subscribe to my channel as it will help me gain a little bit of traction in the YouTube algorithm. Today, you're going to be equipped with everything that you need to know about auto-apply recommendations to be able to determine if they're a good fit for your business's Google Ads account. And just a heads up, make sure you stick around to the end because I have a gift that I want to give you, a freebie that can help you get better online marketing results. Without further ado, let's jump into the slides. All right, so we're going to talk about auto-apply recommendations, what they are, why you should probably turn most of them off, and I'm going to give you an alternative to use uh, if you do not want to use them. So we know that Google is moving in this direction of artificial intelligence and machine learning and account simplification. And the reason why they're doing this is they're trying to encourage more adoption. They're trying to make it simpler so that small businesses across the world uh, can start using Google ads and not be as afraid of it. So auto apply suggestions and recommendations. I'll read this line right here. We're taking automation one step further, giving marketers an option to opt in to automatically apply certain campaign and performance recommendations. So in a nutshell, what this is, is if you opt into auto apply, auto apply uh, recommendations, um, many of the changes that you may or may not have made inside of Google ads, Google has the ability to automatically make them for you. Now, this might sound harmless, right? Because this is probably aligned with Google's best practices, which for the most part it is. However, uh, here's the thing. If you do not respond to these suggestions uh, that appear inside of your Google Ads account, after 14 days, uh, Google will automatically apply them. And so that may be problematic for your brand, for your business. Now, there is one thing that Google will not touch, and that is your budget. But with auto-apply recommendations, almost everything else inside of Google Ads is fair game. So no, they will not increase or decrease your budget, but almost everything else is fair game for them to change. And so we'll dive into that right now, and we'll talk about the specifics. So if you enable auto-apply recommendations, what could happen? Well, here's a few examples. So let's say you have a remarketing campaign that you're targeting people that have been to your website or maybe people that have converted on your website and you want to show ads specifically to them. Well, if you have auto apply recommendations turned on, uh, Google may actually expand the targeting, expand the audience. So you're not just targeting that list of retargeted users, but you're targeting a lookalike audience. So people that kind of look like the people that have been on your website or converted on your website. Now, Google can sometimes do a good job with this, and but sometimes they don't. And so it's something that you just want to be cautious of. Next up, let's say the efficiency of your Google Ads account is very strong. It's exactly where you want it to be. Well, if you have auto apply recommendations on, Google has the ability to adjust uh, some of your efficiency targets. So like target ROAS, um, and they could actually make it broader. So what you might actually see is that your performance target gets less strict. So you spend more, you run your budget runs out quicker, and you're not getting the same results that you did before. Next up, um, Google has the ability to change your ad text. So let's say that Google changes your ad text to something that does not align with your brand. I've seen this happen firsthand. Also, uh, you may show on placements that you did not intend on. So with auto apply recommendations, Google can expand the placements at which your ad is serving. And that might include some websites and some uh, placements like maybe you don't want to appear on YouTube or Google Display Network. 
And that could happen. That could be a real consequence of enabling auto apply recommendation. So to get to the auto apply screen, you'll have to go inside the recommendations tab of Google ads and click the auto apply button. And when you're inside of that screen, uh, Google lists all the things that you can enable or disable for auto apply suggestions. So you do not have to enable every single one. Um, you can pick and choose which ones that you do. And I would highly suggest that you do that. So I'm not going to go through each and every one, but I've starred some ones that I feel like are important for you to understand. So the one start here is ad responsive search ads. So get more conversions at a similar or better ROI by showing more relevant ads to potential customers. So Google has the ability to create responsive search ads for you on your behalf. And they say that it's going to get you a similar or better ROI. But keep in mind, there is no guarantee with this statement. So next up, we'll hop into the keywords and targeting screen. And the first one that I'll review is expanding your reach with Google search partners. Now, if you're not familiar with Google search partners, typically they are websites or they are search engines, not Google, uh, but they run uh, the Google ads uh, as the backbone for their advertising efforts. So it could be a lower quality, a less known search engine out there that runs Google ads. And if this is en enabled, your ad could potentially appear on that search engine on that website. Um, typically the return or the ROI that you will see on these search partners is not as strong as just the typical Google search. And so that's something that you have to keep in mind. And then the next one that I have starred here is used optimized targeting, get more conversions at a similar cost per conversion. And I kind of hinted at this at the previous screen, but this essentially opens up the floodgates where let's say that you are targeting a particular audience. So for example, you're target targeting a list of your customers. Optimized targeting can find people that resemble that audience. So here's an example of optimized targeting. So let's say you sell spin bikes um, and you're targeting an audience um, that is people that are interested in cycling or that are interested in spinning. If you have optimized targeting turned on, Google may expand this audience to be people that are just interested in working out or it might be strength training or interested in something like fashion. Um, there's no constraints and there's no restriction on how far Google can go with that optimized targeting. So again, if you sell spin bikes, um, Google might expand the targeting to be basically be anyone that is just interested in fitness that may or may not fit the products that you sell. Continuing on with the keywords and targeting screen, Google has the ability to add new keywords. Um, so maybe you have a keyword list that you're really proud of and it's helped you drive really good results inside of your account. Well, if you have this enabled, uh, Google can add new keywords to your campaign. Another one is Google has the ability to create dynamic search ads. Um, so they say show your ads on searches relevant to your business that you may be missing in your keyword based ad group. So with this, Google actually scans your website pages um, to find different themes and then pairs, you know, the search terms that people are searching for um, with those pages. And sometimes they can do a good job. And I would say that they've gotten better over the years. But there will be times where it's just not relevant. So let's say that you are a plumber. One of the pages on your website is about a, a faucet leak. Well, Google might match that page to just people that are looking for information about faucets for example. And so obviously you don't want to be paying money for that. You want to be paying money to people that are looking for repairs or who are actually looking for a plumber. Last one here, uh, Google has the ability to upgrade your existing keywords to broad match. So let's say you have very specific exact and phrase match keywords um, that do a great job for your business. Google can upgrade it to broad match and one of the consequences of this is that your campaign may run out of budget sooner because you're showing for more and more keywords. I'll move quickly through the bidding section, but essentially Google has the ability to change your bid as they see fit. And this one down here, which is adjust your ROAS or return on ad spend targets. So let's say that for your business, you have input a return on ad spend efficiency target 
that helps you to be profitable. Um, and Google has done a good job historically of hitting that target. Well, if you have this one enabled and Google feels that there's more headroom, Google might actually lower your return on ad spend target, um, which drives up your costs, it lowers your efficiency, and then as a result, you have to spend more um, to get a similar rate of conversions that you were seeing. So I don't wanna be all doom and gloom with this. With many of these auto apply recommendations, Google can and they do a good job in helping you get better performance. However, they're not 100%. And if they're not at 100%, some of the recommendations that they might automatically apply can have really big consequences uh, if there's some of them like the ROAS target, for example, where it's essentially pulling that lever um, and adjusting the efficiency of the account in a direction that does not align with your business. If you have auto apply recommendations enabled on your account, uh, you have 14 days where the suggestion appears inside of Google Ads and you have 14 days to be able to look at it and deny any of the ones that you do not want. But here's the kicker. Uh, you have 14 days and if you do not respond in that 14 days, they're auto applied as the name suggests. So you'll receive an email after the fact that the recommendations were applied and then you can click the button to review changes or you can go into the recommendations tab, go into that auto apply section, and then click the history tab to get a high level view of what they did. So they'll show the different re uh, recommendations and then they'll show how many auto applies that they actually went through and did. If you wanna see the exact change that they made, not just the category of change that we saw on the previous screen, you can do that. And to do that, you have to go into the change history screen You'll then be greeted with all the changes that have been made in the account. And then you have to filter down to recommendations auto apply. And then you'll be able to see the specific changes in case you want to revert them. The first thing that we're going to discuss is setting up rules. Now, rules can be very powerful. And I'm going to read this snippet from some of Google's help documentation about common ways that people use automated rules. So, Automated rules allow you to schedule your ads to appear at specific times of day, adjust bids by time of day, seasonal factors or other dynamic conditions, or control your budget and cost by showing ads only at the times that you choose. To get to the rules, you simply go under the bulk actions tab and select rules, and then you have the ability to create new rules. And so you can name it whatever you want. For this example, I named it low clicks. And then you have the ability to actually set up rules to make changes to your account, but when it's based on uh, the rule that you have put in place. And if you do not want it to make automatic changes for you, you can actually have it where it just sends an email to you um, to share with you that something has happened or something triggered your rule to run. So here's an example of using a rule not to make changes inside of the account, but simply to send an email uh, when the rule that I create is triggered. So this one applies to campaigns inside of the account, and it says, send me an email when there's a campaign that received less than 100 clicks, and then you can specify the frequency of it. So I could say, receive less than 100 clicks in the previous day, and then you could have it where it's not sending you an email each and every day, it only sends you an email when it happens. So in this case, it would be when that campaign received less than 100 clicks, and so if it was a campaign that typically trended trends at 1,000 clicks per day, you'll know that something's wrong so that then you can go hop in and uh, see what's wrong and correct the issue. Here's some examples straight from Google's documentation of ways that you can use rules. You can check in on your budget. You can do budget scheduling. You can pause campaigns when a certain condition was met. You can increase your budget for campaigns that are converting well. So you could say, if the campaign is receiving a return on ad spend over X, then increase the budget. And you have the ability to manipulate bids and bid scheduling. And you have the ability to schedule ads and edit ads and edit keywords. Um, but remember, the changes are only made when the trigger that you specified 
um, happens in the account. So that's the difference between auto apply recommendation and rules. With auto apply, you don't know when Google is gonna make the change. You don't know what they're gonna do. Yes, Google is making changes according to their best practices, but as I mentioned before, they don't get it right every single time. But with rules, you can actually get the benefit of having automation and not having to make each and every single change, but there's the added advantage of having it happen only when the rule is triggered based on the criteria that you provided inside of Google Ads. So the next thing that you can do if you don't want to mess with rules is you can simply set up a schedule and email reports to your email inbox to keep track of the results in case there's something that needs a little bit more attention. You can go in there and make the changes. So to do this, inside of the reporting screen in Google Ads, as you're creating the report, you'll see on the top right a schedule button. So when you click that, you simply schedule uh, when you would like this report to run, what the report name is, and where you would like to send the report to. So those are the two alternatives that you can do instead of auto apply recommendations. You can set up rules to make changes based on the triggers that you provided, or you can simply set up report scheduling and email you the results uh, to help notify you of when something needs to be updated. I hope those insights were helpful for you and I wanna hear from you. In the comment section below, let me know your experience with auto apply recommendations and if you're planning on turning them on to give them a shot or if you're planning on avoiding them. And since you've stuck around to the end, I have a free gift that I wanna give you. It's my seven day online marketing jumpstart PDF. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash jumpstart. If you're looking for simple tips that can get your business results, this is a document for you. It's completely free and after you complete the steps outlined in this doc, not only will your website have a solid foundation to generate more leads or more revenue, but you'll have a lot more confidence that you can manage your own digital marketing campaigns without hiring an agency. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time.